Uh, where are we at? Let's get to our uh, COVID update. And before we get to Scott Evans, our uh, 615 new cases in the state of Montana, that is the second highest after yesterday's record, 733. 197 total deaths, 263 in the hospital, uh, 10,656 have recovered. We have 5,824 active cases. 1,225 in Yellowstone County, 897 Flathead, 503 Missoula, 525 Cascade, 438 Glacier, 295 Roosevelt, 335 Gallatin, 152 Lewis and Clark. There are three counties in Montana of the 56 that have zero active cases. There are the majority that have double, 10 or above. Wear your mask, social distance. That's, that's, that's all you have to do. Um, so there you go. Speaking of some COVID-related news, uh, I, uh, it's not very often somebody gives me credit for this, but thanks to uh, Victor Flores down in uh, the uh, Billings area, Grass Range Winnet is uh, closed for uh, the school's closed for two weeks. There's a positive test at Grass Range. All practices and games canceled through at least October 19th, um, as first reported by Jason Walker. I don't obviously I, I don't normally get to say that a lot. So uh, there you go. Uh, canceled game tonight: Florence Carlton versus Red Lodge at Bobcat Stadium. MSU can't host. They can't have anything on campus. Phillipsburg Volleyball has canceled or moved some upcoming matches due to COVID. But football's still to go. Got to play that football. Uh, Hot Springs will play two games in three days. Yes, they will play tonight against Knoxon. And then we'll play White Sulphur Springs at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. At White Sulphur. So they're hosting Knoxon tonight. They'll play at White Sulphur on Saturday. Two game, Two football games. In three days. Isn't there, some, isn't there something about we want to keep our student athletes safe? How is playing two football games in 48 hours safe? Just a question. Just ask them. I just ask questions. That's what I do. All right. Uh, Nicole Rigoni coming up. And also a couple of uh, Terry Bradshaw's daughters talking about the Bradshaw Bunch, which is uh, on tonight on E. But uh, when uh, uh, right now, we're, I want to get to our uh, first guest. Joining us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, his Helena Bengals are 4-0 and pitched the shutout last week. I think that's the second shutout in four games. And uh, the Bengals are rolling. And they have a big, big test Friday night against Glacier at home. Joining us now to talk about it, Helena High Head Coach Scott Evans, Mike Miller, Stay From Hotline. Sounds good. All right, another great win for you guys last week on the road. Um, and again, the Caden Hewitt show, uh, five touchdown passes in the first half. Are you going to do anything to get him to break that record at all anytime soon? You know what? I think we'll, we'll try to break it when we have to. Let's, let's just put it that way. Hopefully, we don't have to get a situation where we have to break it like that. I, I like what we're doing right now. and. If we can break it in the first half and keep going like we're doing, I'll take five touchdowns every day. There you go. Um, and, again, he's he's mixing it up with different receivers. I mean, we've talked a lot about um, the receivers you have. One guy we haven't talked about, Rafe Miller, and, and I think he had three of those catches uh, touchdowns. Yes, he did. Yeah, he had a great game. You know, we knew he was going to go off eventually. He's too good of an athlete. He's, in, he's been pretty instrumental all year on doing good stuff, and he just got in the end zone this week. So, you know, it just – once again, sometimes it just – the week before, he got stopped a little bit short, but last week he got three of them, so we'll hopefully get somebody else this week. <laughs> it's just like uh, you guys are like the, the Miami Dolphins of the 80s. You just keep rotating great receivers in. <laughs> That's a nice thing to have. It's nice to have athletes <laughs> who can catch the ball. Uh, do you use the pass to set up the run, or are you still focused on the run? You know, we still want to run the football, and just so happens that we got the good three good receivers outside, and we got some good H-backs, and you know, we got a pretty good power team, but right now people are getting us passes, so we're going to take what they're giving us. And so right now, you know, people are still playing the run box against us, and so until they start loosening up, we'll just keep them throwing the ball. Scott Evans, the Helena Highhead football coach, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. Uh, and once again, that defense, 
stellar. I mean, there's not, I don't know if there's enough adjectives to describe how great your defense has played this year. They've done a great job. You know, it's a, it's a nice thing is there's not really a stat driven guy on it. There's some good football players and they're just doing their job. And we get guys every week doing a different thing. And it's just like last week we had a, a nose tackle step in. We had lost our starter and a new guy stepped in and he was player of the week for us. And, so, I mean, it's just a good team atmosphere we have right now. So I enjoy being – it's an enjoyable squad because they're just – they're working work, work for each other. Uh, obviously, they're having fun, but can you sense that? I mean, do they feel any pressure or just, just hey, we're going out and having some fun right now? You know, I, this group's pretty loose. I, I You know, sometimes when we started the year out, I was kind of a little concerned about how loose they were. But, <laughs> you know, now it's kind, of, it's kind of who they are. You know, they're kind of a madcap group that dances around a lot. They like to goof around, so, I mean, they've got a good culture and a good process they go through, and I'm not going to change what they are. They're, you know, they're, they're just they, – the guys like to play football with each other, so that's a cool thing. And we've talked about this before where, they, I mean, they've grown up with each other playing football from the little guy division or small fry on up, so obviously that helps, and the, just the, the camaraderie that they have together is, is on and off the field. It, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. You know, like I said, these these guys are with each other all the time. You know, they they've hung with each other for years, and you know, they, they like I said, they grew up together and they know each other very well, and they trust each other, and that's a great component to have in on the field and off the field. So it's a great asset to have friendship everywhere. Scott Evans joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Shift gears. You real? I don't want to say your first true test of the year, but this is the biggest test so far. Glacier coming to town Friday night. And uh, it obviously starts with uh, Jake Rendina. He put up seven scores last week in a game. This is a very, very good Glacier team that I don't know if people at the beginning of the year, outside maybe the coaches, knew how good this team was going to be. Yeah, you know, we they got a good crew up there. You know, Grady and his staff do a good job of getting prepared. And, you know, they've been in numerous – they've been in the playoffs forever. You know, a semifinal state champions at one point in time. They've got a great program going. And we knew about the Rendina kid. He came last year and – he had over a thousand yards. He was the only a thousand yard returner lap from this year coming in. So, and he just got bigger and better. You know, I, he's a horse, you know, you can't, you can't deny how good of a football player he is and they're using him the right way. So, you know, they do a good job of using their personnel. So we're going to have tough task ball. Obviously they have a great quarterback too, who slung for, uh, uh, I think four or five touchdowns in the opener. Um, they're a lot like Helena high. They can run it and yet they can sling it too. Yeah, you know, they're balanced with J.K. Allen. He's started for him for two years now, so he knows our system real well, and he's in a situation where we, we can't just – we've got to stay balanced defensively. We definitely have to stop the run. We know that. But at the same point in time, we can't be lazy on the pass because Allen will gouge us and we'll end up being in a, a shootout. And obviously, um, speaking of that, they give up a lot more points than you guys do. They've been in some slugfest uh, um, on the scoreboard. How do you uh, adjust to that? Because this is a team that's accustomed to giving up points and yet scoring a lot too. Well, I hopefully we're on the other end of the five touchdowns for ourselves again <laughs> is what I hope for. <laughs> that's my big hope. I mean, uh, my consideration is I hope we got those five touchdowns and they're going to give them up to us again. No, you know, every, each game's got its own dynamic and we got to see what goes on. You know, you, you're playing high school football. We have film on them. They have film on us. And, you know, you just you get in there and, you, you kind of sort out – it's tough to sort out right now quite what is the double-A like in the West because, you know, you got some teams that are playing hard, but, you know, you're, you're not getting all the stuff that you need right now. So right. hopefully we're in a situation now where we'll kind of sort it out on Friday night and come out on top. What do they do so well defensively? You know, they, they do multiple looks. They're they're good multiple look defense. They run some line games and some blitzes at people, and they do a good job of getting – once again, almost like their offense – they use their athletes the right way to get in a position to make plays. And so that's what they've been doing for defense for years. Scott Evans, our guest here, a couple final questions. Um, last week we talked about using hungry like the wolf. You can't this week because it's the wolf pack. You don't want to give them any, um, any, any pump up music. So um, how about some Van Halen in, in honor of Eddie Van Halen? God, that was a, that was a tragic death. You know, gosh, that was one of the big good ones of the eighties that mm -hmm. I grew up with, you know, and I, I mean, I, I, I go all the way back with Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen. I, I, I'd be sorely missed. I was my wife was probably more sad than I was. She she did a little post on him, and I mean he's he was a great one. So maybe we'll just do a little bit of jump and maybe a little 1984 in the honor of him. 
I like that. Uh, what was your favorite Van Halen song? Gosh, you know, I, I'll tell you, you go, to, I can go back to the early studies, but I was actually a Hagar fan of the Van oh, Halen years. Okay. I got into Sam Hagar. I liked the red rocker, you know, I was right. a big red rocker guy in the eighties. So I, I liked Hagar and Van Halen too. That's right. gonna, the purists are going to be upset with me, but I'll be all right. They, to- <laughs> they totally will be. I, I, you know, as a teacher, I thought maybe like I, I gave coach Mahelish a hard time about this, but hot for teachers, not on the list at all. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want any. I know what you teach, and you're teaching a bunch of guys in the weight room. You don't want any of them hot for teachers. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little weird. Hey, uh, it's a big, big game. Um, do you change the, I mean, obviously, do you talk about it, like how big this one is, or is it just another deal? And, and answer that, and then I got one final question for you. You know, we don't change really what we are. You know, our culture is our culture. Who we are is who we are. You know, I'd, I'd like to tell you we're going to barnstorm and do this and that, but really you can't change too much. you got to look at the dynamics of your team and go with that. Like I said, these guys are loose guys, and they like to play football together, and we're not going to change that atmosphere to make it any more, any, any more like where you're getting all fired up and getting them all up upbeat for something. that That's just not who they are personality-wise. So we'll keep exactly the same and go to, our, go to work tomorrow night. Final question. Does playing Glacier this week, because they're so good and we know what's on the line, take their minds off of next week completely? I, you know, I don't even know who we play next week. So I'm basically <laughs> I'm in the situation where, number one is we'll go through Wolf Pack and then we'll see what the, the island of Sparta has after that. Okay, you'll, you'll, you'll focus on the schedule after Friday night at about 10 o'clock. I like that. <laughs> Coach Evans, you're always the best, man. Uh, good luck Friday night and uh, uh, kick some Wolf Pack tail. All right, I appreciate it, Jason. You take care and go Bengals. Scott Evans joining us on the uh, Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. That's a big game tomorrow. They're both 4-0 and uh, with Sentinel on tap for next week. Ooh, and then Glacier's got to play Sentinel the week after that, I think, is how it's going to shape. I mean, man, there's some great football coming down in the next uh, next few weeks. So uh, there you go, Scott Evans. You can watch that on the national on uh, NFHS. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, by the way, Drenda Neiman will join us tomorrow here on the Jason Walker Show because we've talked a lot this week about the county health department and wearing a mask and social distancing to be able to have these games and the athletic athletic events. Drenda Neiman joins us tomorrow right here on the Jason Walker Show. But when we return next, it is the return of the great Nicole Ragoni, and she is... Talking some Pac-12 football next, Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get a home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professional. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back. Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture 1010 Dearborn in Helena. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk to two of Terry Bradshaw's daughters. They got the TV show, The Bra- uh, Bradshaw Bunch. And so we'll talk to um, two of them. I can't, why can't I think of their names? I interviewed them already, but we're going to talk to them today. Uh, Lacey's one. I think Rachel's the other. That's who it is. Drenda Neiman tomorrow, Jason Walker Show. Big, big, big show. Because we're going to ask her some questions about the health department, okay? Um, and playing sports here in Helena. But I've been waiting two weeks. It's like you get withdrawals and, you know, you get used to doing something and then it disappears and then you just, you wonder if it's ever coming back to you. I guess if you love it, let it free. And if it comes back, then <laughs> it's meant to be. Is that how it goes? You've got to be kidding me. I told you I was coming back. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. Nicole Ragoni joining us back. Uh, that's what she said. <laughs> My dinner's done right. How was vacation? Vacation was good. My uh, friend turned 24, and, you know, I told you this. I, I literally told you this in the beginning. I was going to use some of this time to travel. She's one of my best friends. So I went down to San Diego. We had a good time. Um, and it was great. But I am kind of selfishly using this time because normally when I travel, it's all about sports. Mm-hmm. So now <laughs> I'm traveling for fun. Well, that's and that's good. And San Diego is a great place to go to. Right, right. Yeah, I love San fun Diego. Fun beach town. It is. It is. Right. Um, consistent temperature. Um, you know what you're going to get day in, day out. Totally. Okay. <laughs> I have to tell you this before we start. I like literally have to say this. Okay. Okay. So the house I am living in is getting a new roof right now. Oh, at the moment? Like now, like if you hear any like thuds <laughs> or maybe a man fall through the ceiling, <laughs> that is... okay. That is the, the like, three workers on the roof of this house that are, like, giving it a whole new roof. So nice. I, I have to let you know. Like, if something dramatic happens mm. and we go viral and a man falls out of, like, the roof and into my bedroom, <laughs> <laughs> that is what's going on. Um, well, now I kind of hope it happens so we can go viral. <laughs> like, well, Let's just hope it's not, like, on me. <laughs> well, yeah, but as long as, like, his kids, his, can his feet just kind of hang down? Kind of, um, you know, we see movies like that. You know, so it doesn't have to be a full blown. No, I want a full blown accident. Like I want, I want somebody's head to come falling down. Well, with their body, but <laughs> no, I want... your face is Ed. priceless. I just, I want to go viral. I want something good to happen, but it bad too. So good. anyway. All right. That so, um, well, it sounds like something good's happened. You're having Terry Bradshaw's daughters on the show. I know. That's yeah, awesome. it is. Um, I, have you watched the Brady or the Bradshaw bunch? I have not watched okay. the Bradshaw bunch. I'm sure it's special because Terry Bradshaw is an American gem. So, <laughs> so yeah. So it, the whole premise is it's about him and his three girls and his wife. Well, two of his daughters It's all filmed on his ranch in Oklahoma. His other daughter lives in Hawaii. So when I talked to her this morning at like 745 mountain time, that would have been like late or early, I guess, four o'clock in the morning in Hawaii. Wow. Yeah. So she, yeah. Yeah. She's committed. She was. Yeah. So it's a great story and it's a great show, Um, but we'll, they'll join us a little bit later on here. So I'm glad you had a good vacation. Um, at what Thank age, you. Nicole, let me ask more. you this. <laughs> At what age do women just stop 
celebrating their friends' birthdays. Like my wife, they're in their 30s and they go to every bre- or every birthday, they have to go to the same spot for dinner and it's just three times a year. Now it's it's only three times a year, but at what age do you just like can we stop celebrating your birthday and just focus? I mean, you know what I mean? Okay, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, welcome back. Like, <laughs> yeah, coming at me with the questions. <laughs> Dang. Uh, okay, so let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. Why wouldn't you want a reason to celebrate? That's the real question for you. I well, I mean, I get it. I'm just, I'm just saying that it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a good argument. So, all right. Um, so, I for girls, for girls, we always want a reason to have great girls trips, girls vacations. Girls, like, yeah. you know that yeah. you have a wife. Come on, <laughs> it's all about the girls, right? There you go. It, it absolutely um, is. Happy wife, happy life, all that stuff. Exactly. Hey, Jason, you, you're married. You know this is true. Happy <laughs> wife, happy life. Um, like, come on. That's what she said. <laughs> Nicole Ragoni brought to you by Dinner's Done Right. All right. Before we get our NFL stuff, because I am i don't even know if I want to continue with the NFL. Uh, anyway, but because um, I'm really bad right now picking. Anyway, so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to continue the NFL regardless. I'm just not a fan. Anyway, uh, Pac-12. How you got the, the the football's coming back? Um, how's the coverage going to be? Coming back. Because you are a you. Pac-12 analyst, so tell me about this coverage and how it's going to work. Because are there's so many people furloughed? Do they have to bring a bunch of people back? Right. Okay. Here it goes. Okay. Here it goes. Here it goes. Okay. So what we know, seven game season, right? Okay. Um, starting November 7th, Pac-12 championship, December 19th. Okay, we got all those facts down. That's what we know. They're a little late to the party. <laughs> the tea party, they <laughs> arrived late. Um, everybody's tea is cold. But uh, <laughs> this is where the big kicker is, Jason. Barely, if any, are going to be on the actual network. Fox and ESPN are taking most of the games. So the Pac-12 wow. people really might not work. That's that's the big kicker here. Um just don't know what's going to happen. Like we really just don't know. Um, We don't know if we're going to have one game and one crew or if we're going to have two or if we're going to have none or if we're going to have four, like it really depends on whether or not these games and how many games are going to be televised in general. Like how many is ESPN going to take? How many is Fox going to take? How many is Pac-12 going to take? We just have no clue. And with the money issue that we talked about last week, um, they need money. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and um so i and this is like me being the little looking on the bright side you know half glass or glass half full kind of person i'm hoping that they're trying to get all this money right now knowing that eventually things will go back to normal so that we can have a full regular season come fall that, that's me looking at the half glass full let me ask you this doesn't the Pac-12 own the Pac-12 network? Therefore, the Pac-12 network should get first right of refusal for games. And, and I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You're right, but let's be honest. How many people are going to go download Pac-12 network to go watch Washington State versus whoever? You know, like how much? Ma- it's not the SEC network to where there's so many fans and it's just a diehard community, mm. like. Pac-12 isn't like that. Like, we get televised when we're on ESPN. Like, okay, here we go. Here's the perfect example. I'm, I am I hope you know this name. I'm sure you do know this name. Um, Christian McCaffrey. Remember when he was up for Heisman? Yep. Okay, so he should have gotten the Heisman, but because he's on the West Coast and the game times are not in favor of him, nobody knew who Christian McCaffrey was. Right. And so he didn't get the Heisman. So – here, there's so many things and so many moving parts that are playing into how this is going to work and maybe the future of West Coast games from here on out, and which is what we've all wanted, right? We've wanted the East Coast to see more Pac-12 games, even though sometimes the Pac-12 from top to bottom is not the best football conference. But in order to get better, like more exposure for coaches, for players, for these schools, the whole country needs to see them. So 
things could be changing drastically, not only because of COVID, but because of TV rights, money, and exposure. 9 a.m. games. That's, that's like going to happen now, just to fit into a TV yeah. window somewhere. That's 9 a.m. on the West Coast. That's great for those on the East Coast. You want to be able to, to have the Pac-12 showcased. But 9 a.m. football, these kids are used to a routine, Nicole. You know when you played volleyball. Those matches were at 7, 7.30 at night. You, if you were hey, to... Sundays weren't, though. Sundays weren't. Sundays were at 10 or 9 in the morning. And it is an adjustment. So imagine, imagine. Now, football obviously is way different, Jason, with, you know, all the contact. It's so physical. Your body has to have time to recover. Volleyball, you don't necessarily need that as much. You play two games a week. And, right. yes, let me tell you, when you play Stanford on Friday and then wake up on Saturday morning because your coaches want you to participate in community events and have um, – to coach little children that are in the community, and then you got to play a 10 a.m. game in the morning. You know what? It's, it's hard. It's right? really hard. Yep. <laughs> um, but they're only going to have one game, and it's going to be at 9 a.m., and so it's going to be a transition. But for goodness sakes, it's 2020. We're all, like, transitioning. We're all adapting. We're doing games out of our homes. Like, Well, that's <laughs> true. That none is of true. this makes any sense. So right now, these players, the only thing that's on their mind is getting the opportunity to play. Right. And tailgating isn't involved. The fans are not involved. What the fans need to do is sit their butts at home <laughs> and watch the games. Let's get more ratings so that hopefully next year we can put your butts in the seat. <laughs> right. Nicole Ragoni joining us here. Let's continue with this because when you and I last spoke two weeks ago about uh, the Pac-12 coming back, you left in a hurry because you had to go interview some coaches. You got a chance to talk to Larry Scott, the commissioner. Um, what was the, the what, what, I mean, how was the last two weeks gone? Well, well, except, okay, last, the week before, because you were on vacation. So, but the, that week before you left on vacation, those conversations, what were they like? You know, Jason, I, I had a few conversations and a lot of the stuff is off the record, which kind of sucks um, because it's so under wraps. Like I talked to a few UCLA players, I talked to a couple WSU players, but really like what I just said in how dynamic these players have to be and how dynamic the coaches have to be in order to get to the tea party because we're finally invited to like we've we've had the invitation but we've like declined multiple times <laughs> uh i think that's the biggest part is that it's just learning to adapt and they just want to get on the playing field and they just want to get out there and play football like i feel like that's what everybody wants out of the pac-12 that's what everybody wants out of the country is they just want to play. They don't want to be stuck at home. They want to be out there playing. So they're getting what they want. They're going to do what they can to get on the field, to stay disciplined in social situations. Um, think about when you were in college. Um, what were you doing? <laughs> well, I, was, I was 18 in broadcasting school. So I was, I was a good boy, believe it or not. Actually, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Jason, come on. <laughs> really all that good? I, I like, For the most part, I was. I was, I was a good kid, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you went to college. I heard, yeah. No, um, yeah. <laughs> no and they do have to be disciplined, and that's across the board. High school, college, pros, you have to be disciplined in this time. I mean, we look at what's going on in Tennessee. They're going to lose two games in a row um, not being able to play because of COVID. Um, exactly. So you, if you don't have it and you're testing negative for it, great. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Your family has to stay disciplined. Like it's not only you, it's the people that are in your circle of trust. Right. And that is such an Italian thing to say. Oh my gosh. I know. I was just going to like <laughs> meet the parents. You, you broke out a little Rob Bobby De Niro here. Um, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, no, I know. not only do you have to be disciplined, like yep. the people around you have to be disciplined. And, yep. and it sounds like from your show the other night, People around you, including parents, need to be disciplined. Uh, they, yeah, just wear a mask and social distance if you want to be able to go to games. It's pretty simple. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the, you mentioned these players being disciplined and they just want to play football. I'm going to ask you something that goes back, I think, to July, maybe even to August. But remember the 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 big like we want this equality, we want this, we want you know, in order to play. There was a lot of guys, football players, that were going to opt out if certain things weren't met. How was that discussion come about? Because it was like a 
bullet point thing. Honestly, Jason, I didn't even go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was not something that I talked about because for players like myself, for athletes like that are in my situation that are females or maybe other sports that are male sports that don't make a lot of money after college. Um, it's a different conversation. Okay. It's a completely different conversation. Um, when you have millions on the line for your name, you get put into another category. Whereas athletes like myself who were good athletes, hard workers, um, could have gone and played professionally, but just didn't, that wasn't their thing or are playing professionally somewhere overseas. Um, the demand, I mean, we're treated like Kings and Queens, right? We are, that's it. That's it. That's, and that's, that, that's the truth. I don't care what anybody says, even if you aren't playing, you don't. And at the PAC 12 level at a power five school, this doesn't mean like big. And when I was at big sky, I was treated really well. Right. So, yeah. Um, but at the PAC 12 level, you're not like missing a meal. You have opportunities to have food. You get a laptop, you get an iPad, you get all these opportunities that students don't get. So I don't know what it's like to be in the category where my name is making millions and I'm not getting a dollar of it. Right. You know? Yep. So, and, and, and there's also a lot of other things that go into it with the racial equality and all that kind of stuff. I've never had to experience that. So that really wasn't something that I talked about. Okay. But, um... Like I said, the, the the majority of it was more how are we going to get on the field, those kinds of things. Gotcha. Nicole Ragoni, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. All right, so the season starts in a month? Yep. In we a still month. have a month to wait for the Pac-12. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's going to be crazy, Jason. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, all right. Do you want to do picks? Because... Oh, I'll okay, tell you what so happened. We're going to so, recap first. Yeah, we're going to recap because you were gone last week. We didn't make picks last week. I went 1-4-1 one, and because one, we had a tie because we had Philly and Cincy. They, they played to a tie. Now, this was two weeks ago, NFL. Um, you were 3-2-1. and one. So, overall, you are 18-9-1, and one, and I'm 15-12-1. and one. So, you've opened up a three-game lead. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, oh damn, she says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, and P.S., hey, by I the way. I told you. I've been studying this stuff, Jason. I, apparently. Oh, by the way, you were in San Diego. Did you see your boy, Justin Herbert? <laughs> hey, they have to stay disciplined, Jason. <laughs> well, you could have called and said, hey, just good luck. Have fun. He's not my boy. He's, I don't even know him. <laughs> Well, well, you covered really him. Don't. You covered him. I'll say that. Um, but he's your boy. Yeah. He's in the Pac-12. He's not my boy. Um, but man, he's killing it, he's isn't not, he? There's no boys in this. He's a, he's a player. <laughs> he is a great he's football a player. player. <laughs> That's. <laughs> yeah. Um. What was I? I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Okay. I'm doing a recap. You do the quick recap of what happened. We, we know Philly and Cincy tied. Yeah. Okay. You go there. So we're going to do, I'm not even recapping the week that I missed. I'm recapping week four. Oh, okay. Um, I don't even know what so, happened. Well, here you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So Cincinnati is now one, two, and one. The Jags are one and three. Joe Burrow got his first NFL win in Cincinnati versus the Jags. 33 to 25, Burrow was 25 for 36, 300 yards, one touchdown, one interception. I am finally thrilled that he got his first win. Well, okay. <laughs> In Cincinnati. Let me go back here. So the first three times, oh, we've picked all three of his first games except for last week. Are you, is there a little Joe Burrow love fest going on here? Oh, for sure, Jason. For sure. <laughs> oh, okay. She's not even going to deny it. All right. <laughs> no, no. I think the kid's going to be a great NFL quarterback. I am so thrilled for his future. I really am. I believe the guy you. Throws like over three hundred yards, like every game. So does Dak Prescott. Um, but let's we're, we'll talk more about the Dallas Cowboys later. Okay. 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 <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, go. Okay. So. Vikings at Houston. 
Vikings are now one and three. Houston, zero oh and four. Vikings win, thirty-one to twenty-three. I'm not even going to talk about the game. What I'm going to say is that the day after the game, head coach Bill O'Brien was fired. Okay, the week prior to that game, he was in a lot of arguments with different players. Um, one of the superstar players for them, J.J. Watt, was had had an argument w- with him, and he won't go on the record and say, "Okay, this was the argument, this was the issue." He's just saying it is what it is, and we're moving on. And I'm excited for this week. So now um, Romeo Cannell is named the head coach. And um, what comes out is that J.J. Watt is just looking forward to a fresh start. And that fresh start starts with an 0 and 4 start. So we'll see what happens with them. I'm kind of, I'm like gearing towards counting the Houston Texans out. What are you thinking? Well, yeah. I mean, they're 0 and 4. And Romeo, Romeo Cornell is like 99 years old. Maybe 76, but he's still the oldest interim coach. <laughs> Let's not age discriminate here. <laughs> he's still, he's, he's, hey, he's, I'm just saying. and he's not, he's been a, he's been a coach of some really bad teams. So he fits right in with an 0 4 team. Well, there we have it. So that's the biggest <laughs> news uh, surrounding the Vikings. Yes. And uh, that. Okay. Let me ask you, let me ask you real quick. Does JJ Watt, is he a free agent this year or next year? When does he end me. up in Pittsburgh with his brothers? That's what I, that's what I want to know. Maybe soon. Maybe this was the kicker. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Depends on who they hire, um, I bet. Okay. Right, exactly. So Browns in Dallas played the Cowboys. Browns are now three and one. Cowboys one and three. Here we go. Now we're talking about Cowboys, Jason. Uh-huh. 49. To 38. Okay, Browns offense wasn't spectacular. Okay, they're not winning because of Baker Mayfield. Well, no. Dak, on the other hand, is 41 for 58 with 502 yards and four touchdowns. And by the way, I, I don't know if you know this, maybe you do. Uh, he leads the NFL in passing yards. Um, this is where I would love to know your opinion on why you think the Cowboys are continuing to lose even to the Browns. Well, their defense is horrendous right now. You can't give up 49 points and win an NFL game. Unless you're Kansas City and you can just outscore Amen. them. <laughs> but Dak, I mean, all the... Yeah, great... you're just doing the trick <laughs> shots, basically. Right. Yeah, exactly. All the, all the, all the, you can throw for as many yards as you want, but if your defense isn't getting you the ball more and getting off the field, you're not, you don't have a chance. And, and the, the 500 yards is great. He's thrown for like four, 400 plus in three straight or four straight games, but it means nothing if you're not winning. Totally. I couldn't agree with you more. So um, now we're going to head to the Seahawks in Miami playing the Dolphins. Seahawks 4 0. That score was 31 to 23, and the Miami Dolphins 1 and 3. Okay. So quarterback Russell Wilson, my guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your guy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be my guy. <laughs> um, 24 and 34, 360 yards, two touchdowns. Dolphins never had a lead in this game, so they were never in control of this game at all. But, you know, for, on paper, they shouldn't be. And also, I thought that the Seahawks should have, like, ran up the score a little bit more and not played down to the level of the Miami Dolphins because, to be quite honest, Quarterback Fitzgerald for uh, Miami Dolphins had a good game. He didn't have a bad game. So they were just never in control. Um, and the Hawks ended up, now they're 4-0. Just, you know, Hawks, like, this is like a public service announcement from Nicole Ragoni to the Hawks. <laughs> Throttle them. You're a 4-0 team. Uh, just strangle them. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Um, okay, two questions. One, I thought Miami was supposed to be better. And two, what do you think of Fitz's beard? I his beard? Yeah. Uh, I think the last time I saw a picture of him, because I don't, like, follow him on any social media or anything, um, it was pretty long. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like mountain man type stuff. Needed some beer, yeah, needed some beard oil. And it's funny that he has that in Miami, because you wouldn't think that's the look in Miami. Right, right. Yeah, well, I think Miami, I think uh, either Scarface or Will Smith, but not... Big beard. Because Will Smith sang the song Miami, 1998. And maybe, I don't think you were born yet. 
Um, Are you kidding me? I know that song though. Who doesn't know that song? Hey, real, my dad, my dad, I took my dad to a bar one night, a dance club one night. This is true in like 90, 98 ish. And he's two stepping, country two stepping to get in jiggy with it. And he had girls lined up to dance with him. Serious, true story. Atta boy. Atta boy. That is a great, great line. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I love that. That's true. All right. What do we got uh, for picks this week? I, we got two more games I got to talk about here. Oh, all right. All right. You're the boss. This is your segment. Sorry. So, Bills, Bills in Vegas at the new spaceship, Allegiant <laughs> Stadium. And they're playing the Ranger. They're playing the Raiders. Okay, so Bills, who would have thought they're 4-0 and and the Raiders are 2-2, two and two, which I also think is a pretty big accomplishment for now, like moving the team from Oakland all the way to Las, uh, Las Vegas. So True. Um, the Bills, talk about the Bills for a second. They've beaten the Jets, they've beaten the Dolphins, they've beaten the Rams, and now they've beaten the Raiders. It's not like they've just beaten the Browns and the Bengals. <laughs> they have actually like put, got some pretty good wins in there. Okay, so wait, no, hold on. The Jets are zero and four, correct? Right. Miami's one and three. Yep. Who else have they played? The Rams. Rams are what two and two? And they won. The... Yeah, and the Rams. Are, the Rams are good though. That's a legit win. Okay, that's a legit win. Raiders. Um, I'll say it's one and a half two legit and... wins. So they've played. Yeah. They've got a what a combined. They haven't really. They haven't. They played one great team and one decent team. Yeah, I, I'd say that's pretty, like, we didn't think the Bills were going to be anything, Jason. <laughs> when have we thought, when have we thought, and I'm I'm including this in, like, this is, se- like, secular between you and I. Did you think the Bills were going to do anything? No. Exactly. They have Josh Allen. I mean, but apparently he's good. <laughs> he wasn't. He had, no, he is good. He is good. And he was great in college. It took him a little bit to get his feet under him in the NFL. Right. And I don't think anybody thought Josh Allen was going to be a superstar right away. He just, you know, has really big hands. <laughs> so obviously in the draft stock, that's a huge deal, right? No, I'm kidding. There's more to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she's dropping damn. She's talking uh, quarterback hands. I like it. All right. What's the last well, game? Quarterback hands, that's a huge thing. No, they know. You got, you got to have huge hands to play quarterback in the NFL. I don't know why. The balls are smaller than they are in college. Can't fight the facts, Jason. Can't fight them. <laughs> um, okay, so Eagles. This is a game that I watched very closely. Um, the Eagles in San Francisco. Okay, so the Eagles are 1-2-1. One, and, one, and boy, they are having like an ugly year. Like it is just ugly to watch. And San Francisco is 2-2. Two and two. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo, without Jimmy G, they have not won any games. But... He's out with a high ankle sprain. Again, we knew this, but Nick Mullen replaced him, and he was 18 for 26, 200 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. One of those interceptions was a very, very, very bad interception. It was a pick six. (laughs) Um, It was a pick six. I'm going to tell you who it was by. It was by Alex Singleton. It was a pick six. Who played college football at Montana State. So our boy, our Bobcat, Alex Singleton with a pick six. I knew this was coming. And I and, knew this was coming. And when you go ahead, <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got the floor. Uh, Dante Olson, who was signed by the Eagles, who played for the Grizz and won the Buchanan Award last year, uh, got cut by the Eagles, and now he just got brought back. He sounds like he's going to be a Sunday call up. Uh, so Singleton and Olson playing together on that defense for Philly could be a great thing with two Montana guys. Seriously. That's going to be awesome. That's amazing. Yes. Love that. And a cat in a grizz. Uh, I mean, how cool is that? And I actually, uh, and you're going to have to correct me on this. I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not sure if this is right at all. But I heard a couple years ago, Montana had like a more like, I can't believe I keep saying like, um, (laughs) Montana had more current active roster players than some like SEC school. 
That was true. Um, now they do not. I don't think they have any active players right now. Okay, gotcha. But at one point. At one point, yeah, they did. They had like seven or eight former Great. Grizz, which was, yeah. Love that, though. But none of them had a pick uh, six last week like Alex Singleton. Who, right. who also who also uh, won a Canadian football championship last year. Oh, you got to love the Canadian there, football There you league. go. Little knowledge. So, Jimmy Garoppolo did return to practice on Wednesday. Okay. And it was limited. So, there's all signs are pointing to the fact that he's going to play this weekend. But uh, if he doesn't, I think that. Uh, CJ uh, Bernard, the third string quarterback, is going to play because he was 14 for 19 when he came in after Mullins threw that pick six and he threw 138 yards and he was really not in the game for very long. I didn't count how many minutes he was in for, but he did a good job. Like, and he came slinging out of the gate. Well, that's what you have to do. You got to, you get your opportunity and make the most of it. Right. Exactly. See? Exactly, so that's and why you're, field. that's why you're on this show every week. <laughs> You got the opportunity to make the most of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, right. Exactly. <laughs> you're making me better is what you're doing. I'm... Okay. Can we Aww. make picks? Can we make picks? I'm anxious. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. We're done. We're I'm done. ready to make some picks. Okay. I got to catch up. I got to so... kick your butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can try. You can try. You can try. Oh, okay. Uh... Okay, so tonight, Bucks and Bears. Okay. Bucks are three and one. Bears are three and one. Bears still haven't found their guy as quarterback. I still oh. I think it's Nick Foles, but Nick Foles hasn't just gone out there and like sealed the deal. So if the if the Bears win this game against the Bucks, Foles is going to be the head, is going to be the starting quarterback. Where's it at? Um, it's in uh Chicago. Who are you picking? Oh, so, oh, oh, we, you know what? I will pick first this week. Well, you're leading. You're picking bears. You got to, oh, that means, I don't want to pick Tom Brady ever, ever, (laughs) ever. I'm going to go with the bears. That's not my fault. You asked me. You asked me. (laughs) All right, bears, bears each. Okay. All right. Sunday, moving to Sunday. Bills in Tennessee. Um, Bills are 4-0. Tennessee's 3-0. Both are undefeated teams, obviously. I'm going Bills because I'm liking Josh Allen. He's second in NFL passing yards, and I think he's doing a great job so far. Okay. I don't know if that – is that game going to be played because of Tennessee's – they had more positive tests today. Well, has it been announced that it's been postponed? Not yet. So I think we're playing as of now. Okay. <laughs> that means, okay. I'll go. Um, I know who you're picking because you, Josh Allen's your boy. Um, he's got big hands. I'm going to go with um, who they, Tennessee. If they play, I'll take the Titans. Okay. Because you're taking the Bills, right? All right. Yes, I'm taking the Bills. Okay. All right. If they play, so, we'll go with another. If they play, if they play. So if they don't play, obviously it's going to get postponed, and it might be another Monday night game. <laughs> right or Tuesday, for all we know. I don't know. I don't know. They're talking moving it past like week eighteen. That's all I heard today. That's all I heard. Again, twenty twenty, dynamic, adaptable. <laughs> That's the theme. Exactly. I like <laughs> it. Okay. So third. Option and Sunday, other third game this Sunday, Dolphins at 49ers. Dolphins one and three, 49ers two and two. Okay, the reason why I picked this game, I normally would have never picked something like this. <laughs> but if Jimmy Garoppolo comes back, which is like the real question right now, um, I think the 49ers are going to win. If he doesn't, the Dolphins have a chance to beat the 49ers, but I'm still picking the 49ers. Okay, I don't like Jimmy G. I've never been sold on him. I think he's overrated. Um, So I'll take the Dolphins. Okay. Great. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose so bad this year. 
<laughs> nothing, nothing stopping you from picking the other team. I know, I know, but I know who you're gonna pick. So you're picking the Niners, no matter who plays. Okay. Yeah. Well, another game on Sunday that had just a lot of talk around the NFL, around the whole league. Jags at Texans. Obviously, Jags are eh, they're all right. Gardner Minshew, he's smelling blood though. He is smelling blood at Texans. Okay, so they're in Houston. They're 0 and 4. They got the new head coach coming in. There's a lot swarming around in uh, Houston right now. So I'm picking the Jags. Okay, here's the deal about Gardner and his mustache. It needs to go away. <laughs> um, hey, don't be a hater. It, he's a coog, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you could. You could. Um. I'm going J.J. Watt um, and hoping that Hurricane Delta doesn't take out Houston in the process. So I'll, I'll pick Houston. We'll see. <laughs> we got we got so many games where it's like, are they even going to play? I know. And not, I know. Even, not even because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Just because we don't know about the, the, the Saints yet. Right. Right. Exactly. So, okay. Sunday. Colts at the Browns. Colts three and one. Browns three and one. How are the Both Browns three and one? Baker Mayfield's That's not that why... good. No, no. But hey, maybe he knows it now, and he's like really out there cheering him on, getting his team to be pumped up. Because there's something to be said about good leadership. Maybe he's a good leader. Okay. Um, so, how are the Browns? You're ever... like I'm not even gonna. I'm, gonna not, I'm not even, even going there. Over. And I like Baker. That's just, I like him. He's just not an NFL quarterback. Well, that's why he's in every commercial imaginable right now, <laughs> trying to get as much money as he possibly can. <laughs> I will take him over Johnny Manziel any day of the week, though, including on oh, Sunday. Any day of the week, including Sunday, yes. word for word. I agree 110%. All right. So who's playing who? Buffalo or Bills? Or, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Browns. Browns are hosting. Nicole. Indianapolis. Oh, okay. They've got that Philip Rivers dude. Um, I really don't want to pick Cleveland, but my father-in-law loves, he's from Cleveland. He's a, he's a Cleveland guy. Um, so I'm going to take Indianapolis. Okay. So wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. I'm picking against the father-in-law. Okay, I thought we would want to be friends with the father-in-law, but that that that's clearly not it. <laughs> no, well, no, we are. He, he we are. I, I he doesn't have a pickup, so he needs to borrow mine every now and then. <laughs> ah! okay. All right. So, are you picking Cleveland? Are you going Baker all the way? Baker and OBJ or whatever. You know what? I was planning on picking the Colts. I'm picking the Browns just Ooh. because of everything going on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, one more, right? Monday, Monday, Monday. Ooh, good. <laughs> Chargers at Saints. Chargers one and three, but they got Justin Herbert, who is this your boy. Just today your boy was announced was was announced um, starting quarterback for the Chargers. So well, it's yeah. official. Um, they're playing the Saints, but it wasn't official before. That's the thing. Um, he was just kind of assumed the role because of the whole injecting into the side punctured lung oh injury with Tyrod Taylor. Right. So Saints are two and two. Who are you choosing? If this game happens, <laughs> um, I bet you this game, by the way, I bet you it gets moved to, to um, well, it was supposed to be in Indianapolis. Wait, the Saints were going to stay in Indy. Why did I read that? They're not even playing Indy. Okay, I'm going to pick the Saints. Okay, I'm going Chargers. Well, of course you are. You got your your boy, Justin Herbert. Okay, I'm got. I'm just going <laughs> to flat out come out and say this. Literally, <laughs> every guy in sports broadcasting always refers to whenever a female likes somebody as your boy. Oh, I don't, now I don't get it. <laughs> 
That's not all. Well, I'm that's not, somewhat true. That's somewhat I'm true. I'm not coming at you. I am not coming at you about it. I really am not. I swear. Yeah, I but just the, have to know. Like, well, but guys, like, they say it about just, guys too. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, that's a good argument. There you go. Yeah. But like sometimes with the females, and again, I am not even going there. Like this is not like an attack by any means. But when I am, like, it just always like I don't know these people. <laughs> So I get when it. I talk about them, you know, you know. Yeah, you know no, I, I I know, I know, I know. Um, so I, what would be like ideal to hear the? Because I don't even know what would be ideal to hear. Like it's not like I'm sitting here arguing like, ah, oh, this is the way I want you to say it. It's not the way I feel. I don't feel even any way about the other way either. Well, okay, so with Herbert, it's your Pac-12 boy because you you cover the Pac-12, you you work the Pac-12, you went to the Pac-12, right. So he's your Pac-12 boy. Right. Okay. Josh Allen, you just have okay. a... Just, I know that. Josh okay, Allen, you just like. I just like because he's like... This is second year in the NFL, and he's leading the conference... Or he's second to, exactly. uh, to Dak. Dak Prescott yeah. leading the NFL in passing. And he's winning as opposed to Dak. Yeah, and he's torn <laughs> out with the Bills. I mean, exactly. The Bills have just been like garbage. Like, yeah, but you gotta give the guy some credit. But the weather's here. been nice in Buffalo. Wait till it gets cold. But he's a cold weather guy. He oh, played in for Wyoming. Goodness sake, he's from Wyoming. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> oh, it's so good to have like, you back. So good. Instead of arguing with uh, with parents, we have so much fun. Instead of arguing with parents, I get to argue with you. Instead of getting yelled at by parents, I get admonished by you. This is great. So we have five of Listen, our Jason. You know that I have. L- it's all lots about love. Love for the Jason Walker show. It's all about love. Jason Walker. Okay, so we are we have five different picks out of the six this week. Well, this is going to be a huge week for us. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a huge week for you because you're going down. Just saying. Oh, okay, all right, whatever. And just to let you know, even if you win three of those games, like we we could be tied for all we Could we know. be, right, yeah. Well, it's better than being three games behind. That's all I got to say. <laughs> you're you... like, then I can talk a little more smack. There you go. Hey, are you a baseball fan? You know, okay, I'm actually happy you brought that up. I am not, but I want to be so bad. Like, I really want to love baseball. And I do as a fan. Like, I love going to Mariners games. I love just being in a No, 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 I said baseball. Not The Mariners but, don't play baseball. They're not even a pro team. Goodbye. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the walk-off. And I haven't even gotten to the walk-off yet. I like it. Uh, all right, so you want to be a fan. What's holding uh, you back? I just, I, I I, get it, but it's a slow game to me, and I played volleyball, and that is such a quick, fast-paced, high energy, and it's hard for me to enjoy the game of baseball, just the game, like take out the environment of baseball because it's so relaxed you have fun you get a little tan you go drink a little bit at the beer garden like the environment of it is so social but the actual game is hard for me to like get on board with but I I I genuinely do like it like I love and I want to love it I want to be like knowledgeable in the baseball arena but I'm not okay here's here's why I'm going to tell you that baseball is the greatest sport ever invented you ready for this I'm going to drop some knowledge on you it's because the Give game can the game can literally change on the very first pitch of the game and be done. Because a home run could be hit and then both teams it it, it could be done on one pitch and every pitch matters. Volleyball and I love volleyball. But it's not going to be 25 nothing. Right? You're never going to see that. You might see some 25-12s but there's points that You're right. there's points that sometimes don't matter because of an ace or hitting into the net on the serve. I mean, there's free point. There's way too many free points in volleyball, and I love volleyball. Football. If you're if you are a wide receiver and know that it's a running play, you're taking the playoff. Basketball, you can yeah, basically yeah, take yeah. a playoff too. You can't take a playoff in baseball because it literally could okay. change on every single pitch. 
Well, now when I watch baseball, I will keep that in mind because my dad is a huge baseball guy. So is my grandpa, huge Cub fans. Um, and I, I, hey, I like it. I'll never turn down a baseball game. But I don't have that like burning desire, that passion for it. And I want it. I really do. Because I, there's the, um, a minor league affiliate in Oregon, the Hillsborough Hops. Mm-hmm. Um, love the Hillsborough Hops. Been to so many of their games. Love the people that work there. And so I like, I am like rooting to get more knowledge of baseball. But I'm, I'm going to be honest. They're, that I know the game, but I don't like know it like most people. Well, and I, I see your point too, Nicole. Where more it's, the history of it, more the history of, right. of it than the actual game. And it is it is a lot slower than volleyball. It's a lot slower than basketball. I, and I completely understand that. And I think that's part of it why I love it, because you know football and doing it as an announcer, you just get to tell more stories in baseball. I mean, football you get twenty five seconds or forty depending on the on the down. Um, Volleyball, there's no time to tell stories. There really isn't, unless you're on TV and you can, while the play is going on, you can talk. But there's really not a lot of time. I mean, you have 20 seconds between serves, right? Right. And, you know, we do tell some stories in volleyball, but you are exactly right. I mean, and I have so much respect for play-by-play guys and analysts in baseball because the game is so long and the research they have to do about all these guys and trying to come up with new stories and not say the same old thing. Cause mm-hmm. every viewer, if they follow the team, like already knows those uh, stories. So I have ab- my, like the utmost respect for baseball broadcasters. Yeah. And I think that's part of why I love it so much is because, you know, as a broadcaster, I love baseball. I played baseball. So, um, but I, I mean, it's, I, I just love sports and that's except the NFL and the NBA. Are you even watching the NBA right now? And, and that's what, and that's what we're, no. <laughs> is it because Portland's not playing or I just I don't love and live and breathe NBA basketball thank you, thank I you. keep up on it to be knowledgeable um, but to be quite honest and this is going to go on with our stupid sports quotes of the week um, so to be quite honest I felt like after um and I wasn't, I was born in this time period, but I wasn't obviously with it in this time period. <laughs> uh, the Michael Jordan era. Right. I liked basketball then. I don't like basketball now. Um, and what basketball was then is, in my opinion, what college basketball is now. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. And I completely agree with that because I grew up, you know, the eighties with Dr. J and, and magic and bird. And then the emergence of Jordan, right. the Pistons, LeBron James, bad boys. <laughs> exactly. And speaking of the bad boys had LeBron James played back then, he never would have been able to make it because he's a, he's soft and I get it. He's six, nine, whatever, 270 pounds, 270 pounds. The dude is built. I get it. But he couldn't have played back then because of the way he plays now. And, you know, and, and these players last 15 years whining about every call and just, it, it drives me nuts. And it's hard to watch the NBA. It really is. So it, it, it is hard to watch the NBA. And what I will continue to say on that about LeBron James, because I'm not a Le- LeBron James, like I'm not a huge fan of him. I just like the fact that if that man were put into any Sport, he'd be a professional athlete. True. <laughs> um, but what I will say is that I feel like the way the league has gone about a lot of different um, issues, not social issues, this has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about just play calls and the way um, the repping is. All of those types of things has definitely diluted the game mm-hmm. yep. into being softer. Now, if LeBron, put LeBron back, like you said, 10, 20 years. He would have had to adapt, and he didn't go to college. Michael Jordan went to college. Yep. Um, and so I feel like if we were to put him back then, he would do fine, but we can't do that. And that's such a 
that's such a topic that everybody talks about. Right. Like LeBron would have never made it back then. Well, of course he wouldn't have made it back then. Hell, volleyball back then when my mom played, if you had any spin on the volleyball when you set it, it was an instant double. Yep. So how many times have I set a volleyball that has had spin on it? I mean, who knows that I would have even been a setter? I might have been a libero. Well, true. Well, they didn't have liberos uh, back then. You were a defensive specialist. I, I would have been a defensive specialist. <laughs> Or a hitter, you know, I might yep, have been a yep, hitter because yep. um, I was a good hitter too. Well, and they so, had the, the rally. You yeah, didn't have rally okay. scoring. You had you. I mean, matches took four hours, five hours to play. For sure, for sure. Oh. And I just think it's always hard to have those conversations about like what he would have been like back then. Like he would have never made it. I just don't think that's entirely true. What I do think though is that the NBA is soft now. Mm-hmm. Like the NBA lets like. I'm not saying they need to be out there being gladiators. They don't. <laughs> they don't need to try to kill each other, because <laughs> that's not the game of basketball. The game of basketball is finesse, and right. there needs to be, in my opinion, there needs to be a heck of a lot more defense in that league. Oh yeah. Well, you could say the same about the NFL. They changed the rules for Tom Brady and, right. and the offenses, quarterbacks specifically. Yeah. Well, offense sells tickets. I know. That's. Defense. Win the game. That's why they jack up the juice up the baseballs in in. Hey, and <laughs> it's true. Go um, ahead. and the other thing too about uh, defense is that a lot of people always talk about the Golden State Warriors when they went on their their run of championships being like such an offensive team. Well, one thing about them that nobody talks about is that they were a very good defensive team. <laughs> they were. Um, they weren't, they weren't just an offensive team, the offensive team. I mean, you see players like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson making these shots that are just like, holy moly, unreal. You can't even like fathom taking that deep of a shot and making it and consistently doing it. But on the other end of it, the reason why they won all those games, defense, hands down, you can have an incredible offense. Look what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys right now. Like that's right. That's I said that numbers. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. He's putting he's putting up these numbers that are unstoppable. You would think on paper, but when you look at the defense, you're like, okay, something's off here. We need to start tackling people. Well, yeah, how <laughs> and the crazy right people, the right people, <laughs> oh, the right people. How crazy is it that their lone win they had to rally from basically thirty points down, and then the onside kick that Atlanta was just like, oh, we're not touching it. What's going on in Atlanta, by the way? Let's, you know what? We'll save that for another day. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's save that for another day. I agree. I was like, okay, I, I, we've gone in on topics right now. Go on. Uh, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, no, it'll be fun. And you know what? You still get, you can stick around and listen to the Bradshaw bunch. Um, we're still going to play them today, um, which will be cool. So do you, so do I need to, what do I need to do here? Do I need to do talk about my Italian dish? Do I need to give away some secrets, or do I need to uh, give you a little stupid sports quote, or both? Wait, secrets? Did you say you have some but secrets? Just a few things. Oh. Oh, I was going to tell you, by the way, when you are talking about talking to Pac-12 players and coaches and stuff a couple weeks ago, and it was off the record, nobody listened. You can tell me. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um. I was gonna ask you about the Italian dish, but then I got to thinking: is that is that um, is that a is that a bad thing to ask an Italian? Is like is it is it uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it stereotyping? Like, hey, give me an Italian dish. Well, that oh is. Oh my gosh, you can stereotype me all the all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Except when we're talking about quarterbacks. Um, I, I joke. Yeah, um, I know. I, I, know kid, I, I kid. I kid. I kid. <laughs> so, what's the Italian dish okay, of the week? All right. Did so you do? Res- we're just doing spaghetti and meatballs. Ooh, okay. 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 So I'm just gonna. I'm, and everybody's like, you know, it takes too long to make a sauce. I don't know how to do it. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> just try it once, and just use all fresh ingredients. Don't go to the store. Don't go get Prego. Don't go get any of that bottled up stuff. Just make it fresh. It doesn't take very long. It can literally take as long as you want it to take. I like, you. that's the beauty of it, is that it can literally take as long. You can slow cook it. You can make it an hour. You can make it 30 minutes. Like, you can do whatever you want. Make it fresh. Noodles, on the other hand, buy them from the store. Who wants to take, like, fresh noodles, in my opinion, are not as 
what they are. They should be not as cracked up as what they should be or shouldn't be. I don't even know how to say that. Uh, but what I will say is that ravioli and gnocchi make that from scratch. Don't go and get the the um, store bought stuff. What is gnocchi? So it's basically it, it, this is the simplest term: a ball of dough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, what do you do with it? Do you fry it? Some people fry it. Some people do fry it. Um, but have you ever had it before? No. Okay. So gnocchi is, um, like I said, a, it's a dough and then they boil it and then they put a sauce over it and it usually kind of looks, um, you know, the honey sticks that you stick in honey. Yeah. Um, yeah. and they have almost what it looks like a little beehive on it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, that little wooden piece at the end is kind of what gnocchi looks like, but a little bit smaller and there's like little ridges in it. And it's just another form of noodles. I mean, to be quite honest, how many noodles do Italians have to have? It's ridiculous. Right. Right. Seriously. You go to a store and there's, we got got the penne. Yes. I do like, Amen. I, I do like, uh, here's a great dish. Um, hamburger with spaghetti sauce and penne pasta. It'll last you for like a week, especially if you were single when I was making it. Um, what else? Oh, I like the bow tie pasta too. I like bow tie pasta. A lot. I love bow tie pasta. Yeah. Oh, that might so be my good. favorite. And then the meatballs. Stop cooking the meatballs so long. Jeez, so dry. Oh, <laughs> but what if the, okay? Do you want? Do you like? Sounds. Do you want them smaller or bigger? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I, know. I, get where you're going. I don't know how to ask it hey, without sound. This is a night show. This isn't a morning show. Um. So I would oh. say. Um. I like them kind of medium. I don't love it. I don't like the small ones because the small ones are more like Swedish meatballs. Okay, I got gotcha. you. The, yeah, so, I got you. And I don't like them these huge, chunking, like, big balls. Almost They're almost as big as your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want those. <sighs> what I do want is somewhere in between. Like, let's let's make it smaller than a baseball, but not as small as a grape. Okay. That's a good way. That's, that's, I like that. I like that. It's hard to eat meatballs. Yeah. I mean, you have to cut them make up. A and... Get a knife. Well, yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, all right. So, okay. You ready for the quote? I'm ready for your sports quote. Truly dumb book of sport. What's it called? <laughs> the book of truly stupid sports quotes. Okay. And some of them, honestly, Jason, I'm going to be completely honest. I cannot just randomly choose one. Like I have to look because a lot of them are offensive these days. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that would, yeah. That makes sense. We don't um, want that. So this one's about hair, but the hair thing so I, I went into the hair section and obviously like that's a very offensive topic to talk about right now um but I will say that this one's funny because he had green hair and this is what he's referring to his green hair so remember when I said the stupid sports quote was mm-hmm. gonna come back into action because we were talking about some NBA stuff yep oh Dennis Rodman. do you have an idea ah yes <laughs> You nailed it. Oh, okay. What's his quote? Okay. Speaking of go. speaking of balls, because he kicked the photographer in him. It just okay. it writes itself sometimes, Nicole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your quote? Uh, okay. Um, this is from Chuck Herm. Hearn. Hearn. Not Herm. Hearn. Okay. Um, he, he doesn't cut that hair. He mows it. Ooh, I like that. On um, Dennis Rodman's green hairdo. So Chick Hearn was one of the fan was the greatest announcer for the LA uh, Lakers. Chick Hearn used to broadcast Lakers games till he died, um, a while ago. Awesome. But he's from Illinois, and he actually was working at a radio station with a guy, a little kid. Well, not a little kid, but a kid by the name of Dean Alexander in Peoria, Illinois. Dean Alexander would then end up as the voice of the Montana State Bobcats men's uh, basketball and, and football teams for like 30 years. So there you go. 
It always comes back to Montana. And I, my first, my first play-by-play headset, I got from Dean Alexander. So I have a direct connection to the legendary Chick Hearn. That's pretty freaking cool. Right? So. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. When you get to be my age, Love Nicole, when you, come you have stories to talk around. about. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What else do you want to talk oh, about? Because yeah. at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I'll move the Bradshaw girls to tomorrow. We'll just keep talking. I don't care. <laughs> no, get to the Bradshaw girls. It's their moment to shine. Uh, well, they do have the episode tonight, so I should probably play it tonight since we talked about it today. But um, this was fun. I'm glad you're back. I didn't know if you were going to come back. Did you really think I wasn't going to come back? There was, a, there was a, well, because of your Pac-12 commitments, you, you have other commitments. You have a life. Yes. Yeah, I do. I do. But right now it's pretty slow. I mean, <laughs> I told you I'm literally coaching volleyball all the time. Like will, everybody has like a nine to five. Like I have like a five to two. <laughs> you just sounded Italian there. You sounded like Rocky, a five to two. Um, a five to two. <laughs> there you go. Um, do you know it? Any, do you know Italian? No, I don't. It just comes out naturally because it's in the blood. I'm not even kidding you. Out of nowhere, I'll be like, ciao. And I'm like, what the? I never even say that. <laughs> um, well, I think it'd be cool. Your parents should talk Italian or, around you, and you wouldn't be able to understand. I honestly wish. I bet you if I did go to Italy and like spent a lot of time there, it, I could really pick, on it, pick up on it pretty easily. Because when I was – so here's my thing. My favorite accent ever, I have two. Um, Australian – and like southern like southern bell type accent like those are my two favorite accents of all time so like um but when i was in down i was in north carolina in 2014 and spending a few days down there and all of a sudden i you kind of get that drawl so i mean it's it's crazy you do oh my gosh yes you get it so yes. quickly it, it happens i would agree yes. i wouldn't i yeah it does. It's so does. if real. I went overseas, well, Jason, I would sound like that. I have to go coach more volleyball. Do you have to go? It's only 420. <laughs> yes, I No, I really do. I got to go coach more volleyball. All right. You're just trying to get out of this easy. Um, appreciate <laughs> what do you mean it's only 420? We started at 315. <laughs> it, was, it was like 320 your time. Um, thank you for coming back <laughs> on. I appreciate the knowledge. I look forward to next week when I can say that I've got the lead in our uh, vote or our pick em poll or whatever it's called. And uh, I'm anxious to see what else you're going to you're gonna throw at me next week. Yeah, we'll see. You know, things change every week. We could not have Pac-12 football next week. Well, that, is, that is true. <laughs> we may not have any football next week. Who knows? Uh, appreciate it, Nicole, yeah. as always. Uh, teach those kids the right way. And um, enjoy your medium-sized meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, thank you, Jason. It's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back. I, I missed it a lot. I missed our energy together. There you go. We'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. All righty. Have a good one. That is Nicole Ragoni joining us, Jason Walker Show. That's what she said, brought to you by Dinner's Done Right. She is awesome. Um, absolutely love that girl. It's so much fun talking with her. I know we went super long today, but when we come back, we're, gonna, we're still going to come back. We have On This Day in History, but we're going to talk... The Bradshaw Bunch. Yes, Terry Bradshaw's daughters. Join us next, Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of The Jason Walker Show.
Jason Walker here, and I want to tell you about a great place that's going to make you feel better in just an hour. Ocean Spirit Massage. From deep tissue to hot stone and more, Ocean Spirit Massage will get your sore, tired muscles feeling like new. Whether you overdid it working out, hiking the hills, playing golf, whatever it is, or even if you're pregnant, you will walk away feeling better than you have in years. Book now for yourself or make it a couple's massage. And gift certificates are always available as well. Visit OceanSpiritMassage.com or call 417-0542. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com. Uh, welcome back. Jason Walker Show. The segment brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. Yeah, we're, uh, we're running late, but it's okay. We're not, on, we're not on radio, so it doesn't matter. We can do it whatever time we want. Um, but sometimes you just get so much fun going, like with Nicole Rigoni, that you just have to keep going. So, fun stuff. Uh, on this day in history still to come, tomorrow we will talk to NAI President Jim Carr and also Drenda Neiman joins us from the Lewis and Clark uh, Public Health Department. You will not want to miss that. We'll also have predictions for you tomorrow too. So, all right. Uh, so I've been talking about this. The Bradshaw Bunch, it's like the Brady Bunch. It's Terry Bradshaw, his wife Tammy. They've been married like six years. Um, I think it's his fourth marriage. And they blended, they blended some kids, three daughters, two from his previous relationship and uh, one from hers. And uh, joining us now to chat about tonight's episode and what's it like having Terry Bradshaw as a dad are the Bradshaw girls here on the Jason Walker Show. Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. Hi, how are you? I am great. I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, tell me about this show. I mean, this is like, this is cool. It's gosh, it's cool. It's crazy. It's really um, it's just a fun whole family show about my sister, Lady Aaron, myself, Rachel, and Dad, Terry Bradshaw, <laughs> who is a total goofball. And it's just, it's I even enjoy watching it. It's just a fun show. Um, this is just like I said, it's just a crazy type of thing. And and I mean, did you film all this during quarantine? And uh, Lacey, you can answer this one. Uh, yeah, we started before. We started in February and kind of got the ball rolling. And then, um, yeah, COVID hit. And we shut down for a little bit, just like everybody else. And then started back up and finished in quarantine. So that was an experience. I bet. How was that, though? You know, it made us all, like, very close. <laughs> we spent <laughs> a lot of time together. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it was it was a scary time, so it was good to be around family. Oh, definitely. So, Lacey, you're not in Hawaii now? No, I am. Oh, I am okay. back home now. Okay. Um, so it's early there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is very early there. Um, Rachel, um, a big part of the show is is Dad trying to, to set you up. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Lucky me. Um, yes. No, I am. Um, and there's a lot more ahead of this as well with dad helping me. Um, no, he's just, <laughs> I, I gave him permission. He's like, you just keep hitting and missing. And I'm like, I know. And he's like, can I just help you? And I was like, I don't need your help, but yes. And so he's getting a kick out of it. He just loves it. I'm sure he is. Do you guys get tired ever of, and either one of you can answer this, of talking about who your dad is? I like, know. I'm so proud of him. I mean, of course, for us, he's just dad, you know. Right. He's just, you know, that guy in our life. But I'm proud of him and what he does and what he stands for. So I don't mind. I don't get tired of it. Um, 
he is like we've talked about. He is just goofy. But what else besides the show? I mean, we've got mom and 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 you know little sister. I mean, there's so much different things going on with this show. Um, it, it, compare it to something that that we could you know it's it's not the Brady Bunch because it is the Bradshaw Bunch. I think that's what's so fun about this show is that it's not really comparable to anything. It's something new and refreshing and just fun that I think a lot of people have been looking for. It's uh, some of the, the pictures behind, uh, you know, and the, the press release are just fantastic. And it looks like you guys just have seriously, like I said, so much fun, but Rachel, um, you also, besides the show are restarting your, your singing and songwriting career. Yes, that's true. I, I took a bit of a, a couple years of a break and then we got this show and um, then COVID hit and I wasn't working. None of us were. And so I just, got to the piano one day and got re refound my past and it was really out of nowhere. And then <laughs> they're like, well, you should release music. And I was super nervous about it. And, um, and now I'm releasing it and I'm super proud of it. Is it wild horse? Is that the first song? Yes. Wild horse is the first song. I listened to a clip. It's very good. I like it. Thank you. And as an old former DJ, not a talk show host, I, I, I appreciate good music. So, um, I wish you success on that. Um, Lacey, oh, with the farm and with the ranch and everything. I mean, this is a different life than what we expect out of the Bradshaws. Um, what was it like growing up like that? Fun, <laughs> dirty. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it was really way different. You know, your backyard is full of horses and cows and alpacas and donkeys. That's not really what you're, you know, anybody else is used to. So it was a good time. Um, and, and, and continuing with that, how much hard work was it? <laughs> as much as you wanted there to be. I like that. I like, was, <laughs> was mom and dad hard on you guys? Um, hard and loving at the same time. I think, you know, they expected good things, but they were super loving. Um, and Rachel, this is too, you know, one of those deals where, like we mentioned, it's like the, the Brady bunch because it's a blended family. Um, how well did that go? And obviously you guys were older when the blending came about, but you know, it, it's, it's obviously still, um, it's hard to blend. Yeah. You know, when anyone who comes, uh, has divorced families, it's always, and we're all, all of us girls are the same age. So, you know, it's, um, it's not like, Lacey's 10 years younger so we were all going through the same things and you know that that weird stage in life and um and now we're like we're all so close like yeah it takes an adjustment for anybody I would say and if you're like oh this is a different it's a totally different family dynamic that everyone's got to get used to so um and then Lacey with with uh with that um what's what's Tammy like <laughs> She's shy, but she's hilarious <laughs> once you get to know her. You know, she keeps her circle small for, you know, because she's shy. But once you get to know her, she's really great and hilarious. Which is <laughs> which is weird because now she's on a TV show. and I know. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to step I'm out. I'm like, I die laughing. <laughs> I never thought you were doing a show. It is so funny. It's like, I text her all the time. I'm like, I cannot believe you did this. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. Um, what's a typical day of filming like? Oh, my. Um, I was very, very shocked at, I mean, it is a job. You are, some days are super, but then towards the end, when we were trying to be really protective with everyone staying safe and healthy, some days would be 12, 13-hour days. Um, you know, the interviews, it's, it's a lot. It's super fun, though. Like, I had a blast doing it, but it is a lot of work. I mean, you're, you're, filming constantly and you know it's a lot it's a lot Rachel did you guys reach out to anybody else that has done tv shows to to get you know life advice on this yes one of my bestest friends is Jesse James Decker and her and her husband had a show on with the same production company so I called her ASAP and I was like (laughs) <laughs> hey, any advice? And she gave me wonderful advice. And the number one thing was love your crew and get with them because that makes it fun. And literally, we had the most amazing crew. We're all super close. We're, I mean, I, I would consider a lot of them like super close friends. So that was 
the main advice that she gave me. Gotcha. And, and uh, uh, Rachel and Lacey Bratch are joining us. It's the Bradshaw Bunch. It airs on E! on Thursday nights uh, here on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Um, Lacey, with being in Hawaii, being, I mean, you guys have a lot of different restrictions right now. It's hard to get in and out of your state. It is very hard. It's, it's devastating over here. Um, a lot of people are being affected, you know, I mean, every all over the world for sure. But, you know, the economy is really struggling over here because we're tourist based and there's no tourists. So it's tough. Um, and obviously, Texas is not on the, the forefront or Oklahoma, I guess. You know, um, some days you would think, I mean, everything's been very open, but I've, I, I've been a little freaked out by the virus for a while. So I tend to, like, I get tested weekly just because I want to be safe. But, yeah, it's way more different here than, than Hawaii for sure. Um, and, and with that, I mean, obviously having kids in this environment too, and I have a two-year-old, so take me through that. How, I mean, it's a lot different as a parent too. Yeah, it's, it's, you always worry, you know, and school is strange that they're doing homeschool and, but they're missing their friends. It's a hard line because what, you know, you want them to be safe, but you also want them to be able to socialize because kids need that for development and, you know, it's a struggle. Uh, Rachel and Lacey Bradshaw joining us. I think I got a final question for, for each one of you, but where's the, where's sis on this? I mean, you, you, Lacey, you're in Hawaii you're waking up, you know, at, two o'clock in the morning to do this or whatever. Um, where's, where's sis on this? I, mean, um, I don't have horses to feed. She's got, <laughs> she's got a whole ranch to run. I'm just sitting on the couch. So. I like that. Um, yeah. she's, to be honest with these um, interviews, they wanted two and not three just cause it gets so, it's just too many people. So she's actually doing a whole <laughs> bunch of interviews later. But oh, <laughs> it's, just, okay. it's tricky. Yeah. Well, I would have figured then they would have had, you know, Lacey do the afternoon round here so that she can sleep a little bit, but never, I guess not. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't know about that. I don't know who made the schedule. Sorry, Lacey. But no, I'm all right. Hey, like I said, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm going to go back to bed after this. Nice, so. nice. So does Aaron run the ranch then? She has her own ranch. Yeah, yeah she has her own ranch. Oh, she yeah, Okay. Oh, well, that's, yeah. that's cool. Um, so the Bradshaw yeah. bunch, um, last week episode broke out and then, uh, the ratings were so good. Um, uh, but, uh, episode uh, two Thursday nights and just, uh, every night on E check your local listings, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. This week's going to be fun. Hey ladies, sure. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Um, my mom is a huge Steelers fan and she, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that she used to make me wear a Steelers coat and had the one for the thumb in 81 shirt with Mean Joe Green. So um, I had to throw that in. I love it. She loves your dad, Aww. and she'll be watching the show. Have a great time, and thanks well, for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun talking with the, uh, with the Bradshaws. And it's, we call them the Bradshaws. They, they have their own names, but, um, but it's Bradshaw Bunch. But watch tonight on E! Terry Bradshaw and his, uh, his wife Tammy and the, and the daughters. So that'll, it's, it's, it, it, I've seen some clips. I like it. I think it'll be a good time. Thanks to them for joining us. That's, uh, that's awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. Today is uh, October the 8th. It is American Touch Tag Day. It is Fluffer Nutter Day. I have no idea what that is. It is also Pierogi Day. 1818, two English boxers, the first to use padded gloves. 1956, Yankees pitcher Don Larson throws a perfect game as New York beats Brooklyn in Game 5 of the World Series. Everybody remembers the, uh, the uh, Yogi Berra jumping into Don Larson's arms uh, photo. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up real quick, because um, we just got it. So let's see if I can get it. But here's a great picture. Lindsey Berra, and we've had Lindsey on the show. Um, Yogi's granddaughter. But she shared this picture today, and it's pretty awesome. This is from, that is the first pitch of the, of the perfect game, the only perfect game in World Series history. Uh, but that's the very first pitch that was thrown. Like I said, everybody remembers Yogi jumping into Larson's arms at the end of the game uh, to secure the perfect game, but that's the first pitch. That's a sweet, sweet photo. Um, there you go. Uh, let's see what else. 1988, Jay Howell cheating L.A. Dodger 
was ejected in NLCS Game 3 against the Mets for having pine tar in his glove. He cheated, and it led to a World Series title. He cheated. And it's funny because he cheated, and the Dodgers fans are all upset and butthurt because uh, Houston cheated. Well, everybody in baseball cheats. Some just do it better than others. Houston got caught. So did Boston. So did the Yankees. But JL got caught literally during the game, too. So Dodger fan can quit whining and bitching about Houston. Happy birthday today, Paul Hogan, 1939. Crocodile, doesn't he? That's not a knife. That's a knife. You can eat it, but it tastes like... Uh, 1943, Chevy Chase was born in uh, New York on this date. Uh, Matt Damon's birthday is today, 1971 uh, death. In 1793, John Hancock, the first to sign the Declaration of Independence, died at the age of 56. And uh, the microwave was patented on this date in 1945. Imagine how much that changed um, America. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. So much fun today. Great show. Scott Evans joined us. Nicole Ragoni. She's back. That's what she said. Uh, And the Bradshaw Bunch. Watch it tonight on E! Tomorrow, we'll talk to Jim Carr, NAI president. They signed the NAI passed the name image likeness. We're going to talk about that. And also going to be uh, joined by Drenda Neiman, Lewis and Clark Public Health. We'll talk a little uh, spectators in the stands. That's tomorrow here on the Jason Walker Show. Had a great time. We'll see you. Go to jasonwalkershow.com if you missed anything or want to rewatch or re-listen. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 4. Don't forget, Drendan Neiman joining us right here on the Jason Walker Show. We'll see you at 4 tomorrow. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.